I should just sit like this. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm alive. Oh, I was. <laughs> How long is my live like oh, that? Oh, Hello? <clears throat> if I cough a few times or clear my throat, <coughs> forgive me. <coughs> this cough literally, it won't quit. <clears throat> it won't go away. So I'm taking it easy today. And I'm just going to sit here and go through a few things. But I also wanted to say hi because I haven't seen you guys in probably two, three weeks. Yeah, probably. Um, <clears throat> I'm like day 20 from like first symptom. So um, I'm doing slightly better. Yesterday was a rock star day. Like yesterday was amazing. I felt great all day. <clears throat> I was um, I was up. I was out. I was, I was around. I was feeling great, right, Matt? The cough oh, yeah. was barely there. Today, <coughs> cough is back. Um, a little bit of tightness in my chest, and um, as you can hear, I'm still a little bit stuffy. Um, I took these like uh, what are they called? Tessa lawn pearls or something. Um, and I took one the other night. Go in the go in the oh, room. Yeah. Um, I went and took them the other night, and I got you're shaking the I table. Know, I, felt that. I got a wicked headache, and I was worried that um, that it was that medicine. So I haven't <clears throat> actually taken it since. I've been taking um, melatonin at night to help me sleep. Okay, I can't. Come no. on, guys. Yeah. Go. Beep beep. Bye. Um, I've been taking melatonin at night. Right now, I'm kind of getting a headache, to be honest, and I don't know why, because I was feeling pretty decent other than the cough today, but here we are. So how's everybody doing? Um, <clears throat> COVID is no fun. I don't wish it upon anybody. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe and being careful. <coughs> it was literally probably one of like the worst experiences of my life. Yes. I will be live um, with product on Thursday night. So you guys can catch me with new product Thursday night. Today I've got pre-orders. I know you guys haven't been seeing a lot of my posts <clears throat> and um, there's a lot of things you guys have actually missed out on because we are, um, we have been scheduling posts and po schedule posts actually don't really push to you guys at all. It only happens to be on your page if you're scrolling. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Eileen, I'm definitely pale. My, you can tell my psoriasis has like gotten out of control in my eyebrows and on my um, hairline. <clears throat> it's been, I need to blow my nose. Excuse me. No, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Hey, it's me. Looking fabulous as usual. I did get my hair cut though. She did a really good job. Finally, because it's getting a little out of control there. I know that night I was I was uh, live. Everybody was loving my hair piece. Oh, were they? Yeah. Sorry guys. I needed to blow my nose. So I'm back. So yeah. So my psoriasis has gone out of control. Um, you can see it on my arms here. <clears throat> um, it's just gone. It's just been a little crazy, um, lately here with everything. Um, I know my hair is going to start falling out and actually a large chunk, you can see right here, a large chunk of my hair fell out. Um, what was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Um, I was scratching and literally just a chunk of hair fell out, which I know is normal for COVID after COVID. Boys. Guys, shut the door and be quiet, please. 
we started homeschooling back up. The kids killed it today. They did really, really good. We actually never really gave them a summer break. We've kind of just been homeschooling on and off. Matthew has a week and a half left of second grade. And uh, Grayson probably has like a month or two left of kindergarten, which he's ahead anyway. He technically wouldn't start yeah. kindergarten until this year. And he's only got a month or two of kindergarten left. So he's going to start first grade in the middle of his actual kindergarten year. So he'll be ahead. Um, <clears throat> Rachel, so ironically enough, how this all started, I'll just tell you guys. Matthew had um, woke up stuffy um, Monday, the 2nd of August. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had Vegas and I said, F that, I'm out of here. And I left because I was terrified that I was going to get sick from him. Unfortunately, we sleep, Matthew and I sleep in the same bed because, you know, here in the condo, it's tiny. And I must have got it already from him. We think we actually got it from one of our uh, favorite restaurants, waitresses. She was sick for quite a while. And um, she was serving us. And <clears throat> four days after we saw her, <coughs> Matthew was stuffy. So anyway, fast forward, I go to New Jersey to escape, right? I went to go work and then head out to Vegas with the girls. On Wednesday the 4th, I started feeling a little wonky. Um, I started, I had a low grade fever. What else did I have? Chills, I don't think, I, right? yeah, I had chills. I didn't have a cough or anything. And then on Friday it went away. I felt fine. So I flew out to Vegas on Saturday. And I mean, the girls saw me, I was okay. Um, I thought it was just, you know, one of those weird bugs, right? Like yeah. you get a 24 hour fever bug and then you get the chills when you get a fever, right? And you call it a day. So that's what I honestly thought it was. And then um, Sunday came and I felt like absolute shit. Um, <coughs> Matt felt like shit. I felt like shit. Matt and MJ and Grayson all tested on Tuesday the 3rd and they all came back negative. So I was like, well, I called my teledoc and my teledoc said if they're negative, you're negative. It's probably just a random, you know what I mean, thing. So um, anyway, I started feeling like crap in Vegas. So I stayed home. You guys didn't see me on any of the lives because I stayed in the room the entire time. I had no idea I had COVID um, until I went to the hospital on the... Ninth? Ninth. Monday the ninth. Um, I had a fever for probably like three or four days at that point, right? Yeah. No, maybe two days. Yeah. I had a pretty yes, yeah, Sunday yeah. Sunday I had that fever. Monday I started feeling really, really bad. And um I took myself to uh urgent care. It was like an ER. And um that's when they tested me. I tested positive for COVID. That's when the girls left and I was quarantined in my room. But because my first symptoms technically showed on the 4th, right. I was free to go on whatever day I left because they wouldn't let me out of my room. So this whole thing was a whole disaster, guys. It was the worst experience of my life. So um, <clears throat> they deactivated my key to my room so I couldn't go out of the room at all, which I understood, but they wouldn't deliver me DoorDash or anything. I only could order um, like the $40 meals on their um, <coughs> room service. And um, obviously it was cheeseburgers, chicken fingers, like yeah. nasty crap. Okay. And um, we all fought for things to be delivered. At one point, my mom and Sharon actually, Miss Christie's mom got through and they said that DoorDash could deliver to us in a specific way. Well, then they stopped allowing DoorDash to deliver. Um, I was still locked in the room. Hey. And um, anyway, <clears throat> Rebecca called um, because she was trying to deliver me food and um, they wouldn't. And Rebecca, uh, yes, Rebecca had it out with them and basically told them what you're doing is completely illegal. We will have a lawsuit against you um x y and z and long story short they called me back and said well since your first onset of symptoms was the fourth you can technically leave your room um tomorrow so <clears throat> that's when i um that's why i lost 20 pounds um i wasn't eating not that i didn't have much of an appetite but when i did i really wanted to eat something and i couldn't 
So um, they never checked up on me. They never called my room to make sure I was okay. At one night, I had to actually, it was Thursday or Friday night, I had to call the paramedics to the room. I had 105.6 fever. Um, I was having a really, really tough time breathing. It was 2.30, I was all by myself. And um, I called the paramedics, the paramedics came, told me basically that the hospital in Vegas wouldn't do anything for me because my pulse ox was still 90 and above. And it was still bad, but, um, and they basically said, too bad, you can go to the hospital, they're not gonna do anything and they're probably just gonna send you home. So um, they're on, you're on medication, blah, blah, blah. They were completely useless, but the hotel never checked up on me. Um, the hotel never, you know, they completely deactivated my keys. So even if I needed to get medicine or something, I, I couldn't get any extra medication. I had no Tylenol PM. Um, so I couldn't get any PM medications because they weren't letting people deliver to me <clears throat> and I couldn't leave my room. Yes, this is the same hotel that had drugs in the room and the room absolutely had drugs in it. That was a true story through and through. We came into our room and there was drugs in our room. We had to switch rooms. They gave us a room with a really shitty view. So then we had it out with them again and they switched us to a nicer room. But at this point... <coughs> When they finally, excuse me, let me out of the room, um, I told Matt to book me a flight home on Tuesday, just in case, right? Yeah. But then I was just feeling really bad. I was by myself. They wouldn't let Matt or the boys come because they said if they did, we would be stuck in the room for another 10 days. Yeah. Um, and they wouldn't let them out for another 10 days. So the boys and Matt couldn't come. I was stuck in there by myself. And I said, you know what? It's time. I have to get out of here. Um, if I'm allowed out of this room, I'm allowed on a plane. I, my fever was gone at this point. I think for two or three days, my fever was gone at this point. And um, anyway, I took a flight first class in a pod. We wanted to make sure that I had a pod for myself. So one, I was away from as many people as possible and two, so that I could lay down. Um, so the only flight that had a first class pod available was to Atlanta. So I flew to Atlanta. The boys drove six hours to pick me up in Atlanta. That was the longest drive back oh, I ever had. Gosh. Matt was sick, I was sick. Oh. MJ was coughing. The only person who came unscathed in all of this was Grayson. Um, the hotel was a cosmopolitan and I usually have nothing but good things to say about them, but I will absolutely be getting a lawyer uh, um, and discussing what can be done even for the future for them to make protocols for people who do test positive because no one should be trapped in their room no. like that and not be allowed no, to no, have things, things delivered to you. But anyway, that's besides the fact. Um, so I flew home, <coughs> six hour drive home. I felt like absolute shit. I couldn't sleep. The night before I left, I actually didn't sleep all night. I was awake for over 24 hours at this point. I was so exhausted. I was so scared to use my pillows or anything because I was coughing all over them all week because nobody was coming to get laundry to clean it for me. Um, so I was super, super like just paranoid. I didn't sleep and then I got home and I was pretty sick when I got home. Yeah. Um, I think just because I was up, I was doing too much. I was lifting my bag and um, I was down and out probably for another a, th two or three or four days. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so so this is this is the story of my COVID disaster. Um, I this is going to sound really, 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 really terrible. But first and foremost, if you're feeling sick before traveling, just don't, don't go, um, don't risk it like I did. And if you do risk it for the biscuit and you know you're sick as fuck, mm -hmm. I'm gonna suggest getting a car and just leaving. Don't even test where yeah. you are, yeah. rent a car and, and drive home and, and get to your house with yeah, your people. We should have done. done that, we should have, but we, what, what do we know? Yeah. Get a car and get home okay um don't test where you are unless you plan on staying there for an extended period of time mm -hmm. um i also am going to suggest if you're traveling to another country don't right now yeah. um because if if you had to get stuck in italy because you have to test to get back into yeah. the u.s still 
you know, to get stuck in Italy or anywhere for that matter, Aruba, wherever. <clears throat> you don't want to be stuck somewhere else, <coughs> quarantined by yourself, um, in a strange place where you can't fully rest and there's people to not take care of you. Um, I didn't start feeling any sort of better until I got back here in South Carolina and I had the boys and my husband. You know when they say like people are in comas and hospitals and stuff and you hear your people talking to you, right? And you fight for it. I, I found that that was very true when I was in Vegas. I just felt defeated. Right. There was just nothing more for me. I honestly, when I went to the hospital, I was half half of my body got was paralyzed um i had i don't know if it was reaction to the medication that they gave yeah. me or what but my hands were stuck like this my mouth was completely stuck open and my feet were frozen and um i was stuck like that for a good half hour i couldn't explain to them i couldn't ask them to help me um it was one of the scariest things that has happened to me and i was completely by myself the doctor refused to talk to matt on the phone despite him being my husband yeah. Um, the nurse was a angel from above and she got Matt's phone number for me and from my, I think she got it from my oh, phone and yeah. I, <clears throat> she talked to him cause the doctor refused to talk to him and, um, it was just, it was not a good scene. Mm. It was not good. It was not, it was scary <coughs> and <coughs> Tessa Ann and it honestly wasn't until I got home that I uh, did any sort of healing. Um, I have, this is gonna sound really weird, but I have um, <clears throat> slight PTSD um, because of this. Um, when I was in the room, um, the lights from outside were really bright and the, the inside of the room, there was no like night light per se. So it was either super dark or it was super bright. So what I would do is I would shut all the lights off and leave the <clears throat> blinds open. So now kind of when I see bright lights, I'm kind of like weird about it. Um, if I hear loud bangs, I don't know why there were so many loud bangs in Vegas, but it was loud. It was extremely loud. And Rebecca will know because she was in the room with me. Chelsea would know. But now every time I hear a loud bang, I kind of like, I kind of like freak. Um, what else, Matt? What else triggers me? Uh, foods. Foods. Panera. Um, my mom had Panera delivered to me the one time that they let food delivery get through. So when I went to Panera the other day, I couldn't um, find. I couldn't eat the sandwich that I normally get because um, I, I was just feeling really weird about it. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think I'll be going back to Vegas for quite some time just because of the whole like. I'm just, I'm feeling a certain kind of way about it. And I'm just, I'm not comfortable. You know what I mean? And um, this it, coming home was definitely um, mentally what my body needed, if that makes sense. So, um, so that's the story. I am not vaccinated. I, and I, please don't turn this into a vaccination discussion. I'm not vaccinated. I will be getting vaccinated. <clears throat> in 90 days it's a personal choice of mine um i was in the hospital my aunt is a doctor in the hospital uh 90 percent of the people in the hospital were unvaccinated that i was in 10 percent of the people were vaccinated so um for me it was a, it's a personal choice because i feel like yeah, i know i can get i can still get covid i mean obviously i'm not in, invincible um but if it's gonna one keep me out of the hospital or yeah. two hopefully make my symptoms a little bit less um, I never want anybody to feel like this, but I still firmly, firmly, firmly believe that um, vaccinations are a personal choice. Um, so I, that's why I don't like to talk about vaccinations because I believe they are a personal choice. Um, and I know that they're important, right? For but sure. I also feel like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it should be a, a choice that's given to us yes. and for religious purposes, right? Mm -hmm. For um, medical purposes, because vaccine um, injuries are an, a thing, a real thing. So um, anyway, uh, I will be going to get vaccinated just because 
Um, see, and that's okay. You don't have to trust the shot. That's why I yeah. honestly didn't, we didn't get the that's shot because didn't we didn't it. trust it either. Yeah. Um, and this is now after getting it, this is a risk I'm willing to take yeah. for myself, um, for nobody else. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. I know I can still spread it with it. I can still spread it without it. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> But for me, I, it's a choice that I'm willing to, it's a risk I'm willing to take now after being on the other side of it. Yeah. Right? So, um, yes. So we do have to get our antibodies checked. So they said after 90 days, was that the kids? After 90 days, we'll be able to um, get our antibodies checked. Uh, that's actually, it's, it's not really proven, Leah. That's why I'm like, it's, there's still a ton of stuff. So um, anyway. Um, skin cancer, I've kind of like put on the back burner because I am just recovering from this. Um, also my mom and dad are doing well. My mom had the full treatment inside of, um, the hospital. My dad was treated by my aunt. My aunt is a doctor. Um, and she came and flew to New Jersey and actually took care of both my mom and my dad for the past week. It has literally been such a godsend and so comforting knowing that my parents had somebody <clears throat> that could take care of them, that was properly equipped, that knew what they were do what, what she was doing, because that's actually what she does. She's a travel doctor who takes care of um, COVID patients in hospitals that are uh, struggling finding staff. So, um, it was it was a godsend because i could i could recover without having to worry about my parents yeah. you know what i mean so sure. it was really really it was nice to be able to have my aunt there with my parents so they're doing well chelsea luckily only got a mild case and rebecca is vaccinated and did not get it at all so um my parents were not vaccinated either so i gave it to my parents so this is proof again mm -hmm. So Matthew or the <coughs> waitress gave it to me, which then gave it to all of us here in this house, except for Grayson. I went and gave it to my parents in New Jersey. And then I went and gave it to Chelsea in Vegas. So it, I infected one, two, three. I, I personally infected three people. Yeah. In a matter of like yeah. two or three days. Right. I was with my parents for two days. I was with Chelsea for a day and a half. Right. So it kind of just goes to show you, you have to be very, very careful. Um, without even knowing it, without even I had no idea I had COVID, yeah. zero idea. And I went because I didn't go because my yeah. teledoc said that if they tested negative, then I was probably negative. So it's just, it, Rebecca was with us. Yeah, she is, she's vaccinated though. So um, I don't know if it was just because yeah. she was distanced from me enough or if it was the vaccine. Yeah. Either way, we're super blessed that she did not get it. Um, so <coughs> super thankful for that. But um, I just want you guys to be careful, whether it means you get vaccinated or you don't, or whether it means you're sanitizing, whether it means you're, you know what I mean? I just want, I just want you guys to be careful because yeah. it was very scary and I don't want anybody. Don't get complacent, don't get comfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be careful. And even, you know me, I'm careful. I'm a germaphobe to the max, and I still managed to get it. And I think I got it from a waitress at our favorite restaurant, our our favorite waitress at a fa our favorite restaurant. So it kind of just goes to show you guys that, you know, it, you can be as careful as possible and yeah. still get it, but still take those precautions yeah. because it did take 18 months for it to catch up to me. Knock on wood. With all my traveling that yeah. I do, it took 18 months for it to finally get it finally get me so <clears throat> so yeah the cough is here um but i am 20 days post my first set of symptoms so um knock on wood i'm still here i'm alive matt started feeling better slightly before i did yeah. matthew only really had the cough. the cough that's all he really had um and again knock on all the wood in the land grayson stayed healthy because he's the one if you guys don't know grayson yeah. um actually has only one fully working lung um his other lung was affected at birth um he sucked in all the water went right into his lung anyway spent a few days in the nicu but if he got it it could have been much worse so i'm thankful that he is still okay 
I do not have taste and smell. Nope. Um, I can taste. Matt can taste. I can't smell he can't smell a thing. And um, you get this thing I taste. Brain fog. I taste very little. Um, like I could taste sweet, but like two bites in. Yeah. Then it's gone. I ate an entire bag of chips and dip last <laughs> night and had zero clue. <laughs> I didn't taste it at all. It was French onion dip, salty chips. We can't smell anything. We don't smoke. And sometimes when somebody like blows their cigarette yeah. smoke in our face, it kind of, you know, bothers us because we don't smoke. And um, somebody blew it in our face today and we were like, yeah. Grayson was like, oh my God, yeah. what is that smell? And yeah. Matt and I were like, yeah. so no taste or smell at all. Um, <clears throat> what else brain oh fog. the brain, brain fog, fog. Like, so literally you will just be sitting there and it'll you'll just go like <coughs> almost completely blank like, it feels like you're floating, you're floating. Uh, i swear it's the craziest i'm thing. like as i'm sitting in this chair i've had brain fog longer than matt has yeah. matt has a very it periodically i generally have it for most of the day and it feels like you're just you're floating yeah. on a cloud yeah. like i'm sitting here and as i look out the window at the background it feels like I'm like I'm on a boat almost. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like I'm kind of floating here. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of crazy um, how that is like the most predominant symptom yeah. that the both of us have. Did you want me to cook these while you're on live? Yeah, yeah, you can cook. So um, yes, we're super thankful that we are still here, that we are healthy. Um, I am also very very thankful that. Um, you guys, like, you supported me and weren't like, ew, yeah. ew, you know what I mean? Like, you were super supportive. You were super helpful. I'm actually quite shocked that so many of you have had COVID and struggled with it as well. So, um, <clears throat> you guys had helped me through it. It was kind of crazy because so many of you had the same experiences and let me know that some of the things I was feeling were actually normal, you know? <coughs> so um so yeah so i'm super super thankful for you guys and i just want you to be careful i don't want you guys to um get comfortable and get complacent and um you know not think it can't think it can't happen to you because it totally can and i also don't want you to think that it's not bad for everybody because some people get really mild symptoms like chelsea and my dad and then some people get really, really bad symptoms like me. It's just, it's luck of the draw. So um, just be careful, take care of yourself. Um, Matthew, we think had it. The boys both tested negative, but they did test like only like a day into their symptoms. Yeah. So they could have tested early and it was a rapid. So um, <coughs> I tested almost a week after they did yeah. and I tested positive, so. Um, after Matthew, Matthew woke up stuffy Monday and I had the fever Wednesday that when my fever, uh, the fever that went away, um, was Wednesday. And then by Sunday I was dying again. So a week. Yeah. So yeah, just be careful guys. All right. So I've got some things for you. Okay. First and foremost, I launched fall swag bags for y'all.